the one-sided story. My topic today is inspired by the writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and she called it the one-sided story. She talked about her early days as a writer and how her stories were formed based on what she had read, even though she had never experienced it at the time. In her talk, she discussed the impression one story or a part of it could form. A single story is never complete. It tells only a part of a whole story. She mentioned the way people in other continents have a single story of Africa, one of catastrophe. In her word, so after I had spent some years in the US as an African, I began to understand my roommate's response to me. If I had not grown up in Nigeria, and if all I knew about Africa were from popular images, then I too would have think that Africa was a place of beautiful landscape, beautiful animals, and incomprehensible people fighting senseless war, dying of poverty and AIDS, unable to speak for themselves and waiting to be saved by a kind white foreigner. I would see Africa in the same way that I, as a child, had seen Fide's family. This single story of Africa ultimately comes, I think, from Western literature. Now, here is the quote from the writing of a London merchant called John Locke, who said to West Africa in 1561 and kept a fascinating account of his voyage. After referring to the black Africans as beasts who had no houses, he writes, they are also people without heads, having their mouth and eyes in their breasts. Now I have laughed every time I read this, and one must admire the imagination of John Locke. But what is important about his writing is that it represents the beginning of a tradition of telling African story in the West, a tradition of sub-Saharan Africa as a place of negative, of indifference, of darkness, of people, who in the words of the wonderful poet, Royad Kindling, are half of evil, half child, and so I began to realize that my American roommate must have, throughout her life, seen and heard different version of this single story. At some point in our lives, we have been guilty of viewing a people or a person through one story only. Many times it's not our fault because we may have had access to only one story or a part of a story. Thanks to books and media, other times we are too lazy to fight other stories. So we stick to only one and form stereotype on this story. This is why some people feel that all Muslims are terrorists, every Nigeria is fraudulent, and feminists are men haters who do not cook for their husband. You can add yours, the list is endless. These are grossly untrue. She continued. So, it is how to, so that is how to create a single story. Show a people as one thing, as only one thing over and over again, and that's what they become. The single story creates stereotype, and the problem with stereotype is that they are untrue. The problem with stereotype is not that they are untrue, but they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story. Story matters, many story matters. Stories can be used to dispossess people, but can also be used to empower people and repair their broken dignity. We need to realize that there's never a single story of any place. It is important to read diverse and explore cultural similarities as much as we do cultural differences. This is the only way we can get rid of single stories and the danger they pose and regain paradise. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. We've had the Suki chilling in and out. We don't even know what is going on. We never actually ever hear the truth. Everybody's the same, and that the same <laughs> yeah. thing that's been going on with Jonathan is going on right now. Statistically, women are more than the men, but in Nigeria, politics is more of a game of strength than numbers. <laughs> One of the reasons why women, we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nigerians have never been more ready for a change. Yeah. Somebody's got to sit down to and say <laughs> that this is my strategy for exactly. making change. And it has to be unite. Frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Everywhere, in the villages, the villages are worse. We have yeah. a heritage, but dirty heritage. We, basically, and that's it. I don't think we know beautiful things anymore. You depress me. Look, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and,